Hey Miami Lakers, welcome to our COVID-19 update here in the town of Miami Lakes. We're at Town Hall uh, and I'm joined by our town manager, Ed Peterman. And for Mental Health Thursday, we have Rosie Barroso with us with a very important message and a very important discussion uh, for our community. Bienvenido recién de nuestra comunidad. Hoy estamos hablando del coronavirus, de todo lo que está pasando nuevo en nuestra comunidad. Yo sé que hay mucho en la noticia nacional del mundo eh, y hasta el Estado, pero yo pienso que es bien importante tener la discusión localmente y eso es lo que vamos a hacer hoy. Y vamos a hacer eso dos veces a la semana, usualmente cuando empezó el coronavirus, lo hicimos siete veces a la semana, pero ahora lo estamos haciendo dos veces a la semana. Pero hoy también eh, es el día de la salud mental, los jueves de la salud mental, que tenemos la señorita Rosy Barroso con nosotros, que va a tener una conversación muy, muy, muy importante con nuestra comunidad. Miami Lakers, I'm handing it over now to our town manager. Remember to start submitting your questions right now. We'll get to them towards the end of this discussion, but I'm going to hand it over to our town manager to talk about what's the latest in the town of Miami Lakes, talking about our parks, the new regulations, community pools, even beaches, you know, everything that's happening, at restaurants, everything that's happening here in our community. What is the latest, Mr. Manager? Yeah, let me start off by just telling you that uh, the number today uh, from the state's report is 78. 78 people since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic have tested positive in the town of Miami Lakes for the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus. That does not mean that right now, as we speak, there are 78 people that are infectious. That is, you know, since the beginning. So since two or three months ago, the number of people that have tested positive has now reached the number of 78. The majority of these people have already gone through the virus. They've recovered. They're back out in, in our uh, community, and they are now healthy. Uh, le quería avisar que el número de casos infecciosos eh, ha llegado al número 78. Ayer, si ustedes vieron el, uh, el, el resumen este, estábamos 77. So, hubo una un caso nuevo desde ayer, se so, estamos 78. Esto no quiere decir que hay 78 personas actualmente eh, con, la, eh, con el virus en nuestra comunidad. Esto es que desde el principio, hace dos, tres meses, desde el principio del pandémico, eh, han probado 78 personas eh, positivo para el virus. La mayoría de esta gente, todos están ya sin eh, enfermedad, ya se han recuperado y ya también. I wanted to just touch on some of the things that have happened over the last few days as far as uh, changes. Uh, as you all know, yesterday the beaches reopened and everything that we've seen, the beaches, uh, you know, it was uneventful, which is a good thing, right? So there was no drama, there was no big crowds, the beach reopening went very smoothly, and that's a great thing. So, eh, ayer, si ustedes vieron la noticia, ayer fue la reapertura de las playas, y gracias a Dios no hubo ningún, uh, uh, ni, nada negativo, todo fue eh, igual como se planeó, so todo eso uh, se volvieron a abrir. Desde, from this past Monday, uh, gyms, uh, fitness centers, dance studios have been allowed to reopen. Not all of them have reopened. I know that some of the fitness centers here in the town are taking a few more days to get ready. They'll be reopening next week. So, uh, los gimnasios desde el principio de esta semana uh, ya se permitieron abrir. Uh, Muchas de ellas uh, abrieron. Algunas no uh, han decidido todavía abrir. Eh, están todavía en los preparativos para estar seguro que el gimnasio está listo para recibir a, a su cliente. Eh, los restaurantes obviamente están abiertos. Obviously, all the restaurants have now reopened and, uh, and, and we're moving forward. The next thing, summer camps. Uh, we're hoping that the summer camp here in the town of Miami Lakes, the one that we uh, partner with the YMCA, uh, in the next week or two will be ready. Contact them, start the registration. For those of you who are uh, used to using the YMCA, go ahead and contact them, get your kids registered. The latest, the latest, the latest date that they will reopen will be June 22nd. We're hoping that they are ready and up to speed. They're hiring, they're training their counselors. They'll be ready, the, the latest date they've committed to is June 22nd, hopefully it'll be sooner. So, el campamento de verano, que nosotros tenemos aquí en la ciudad, que es con la YMCA, 
ese están haciendo los preparativos, están entrenando eh, los empleados y, y el día más eh, tarde que ellos van a abrir es el día 22 de junio. Pero si ustedes tienen eh, niños que quieren inscribir, pónganse en contacto con el YMCA para poder inscribir los niños suyos en el campamento ese de la YMCA. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Gracias, señor administrador. Y hoy, for today, for uh, Mental Health Thursday, el, el, el Día de la Salud Mental aquí en nuestra comunidad, we have Rosie Barroso, and I know these discussions are so, so, so important. Uh, we know how, uh, how it is, how, how stressful the coronavirus, the, the entire 2020 so far, how stressful it's been uh, for all of us, uh, for seniors, for young people, for middle-aged folks, for everybody throughout our society. It's been a very, very stressful 2020. Uh, I know there's a lot of anxieties, but this is the type of discussion that we're going to have today is to make sure that, that all of our residents uh, know that there are people here willing to listen, willing to work with you, uh, and that's part of the discussion today. So, Rosie, tell us what's going on for Mental Health Thursday this week. Thank you for having me again. Um, again, my name is Rosa Barroso. I'm the owner of the Therapy Labs here in Miami Lakes, and I'd like to repeat it, but we still are offering free services. My phone number is 305-530-8119. Uh, there's other clinicians still in the town offering free services to anyone that might need. But what I wanted to talk a little bit about was empathy. Um, I know the mayor has said that a few times. Um, it's really important to have empathy for other people. Um, the, uh, the definition of empathy is pretty much understanding and caring how other people feel. So it's, it's important to implement that in your day to day, especially in this challenging year we've had so far. So a few ways of doing that would be to listen to another person, which is difficult maybe when you're having a conversation or you're upset, but just try to pay attention to them and listen to what they're actually saying. The next thing could be to acknowledge their emotions. Let them know you understand that they're upset, or they're happy, or they're sad, or they're scared, whatever the feeling might be. Then offer support. Can I help you with something? Do you need a hug? Even though we can't hug yet, but a virtual hug or a space hug. Um, and then you can also just let them know that you're going to be there and provide some sort of encouragement or facilitate some resources for them. So those are just a few little ways that you, could, you can go ahead and show empathy to other people. Um, then in Spanish, eh, para, estamos hablando hoy de empatía, the, um, la oficina nosotros y otros terapistas en el área todavía están ofreciendo terapia gratis, so si les gustaría por favor contácteme a mí o otra persona en el chat. Y la definición de empatía es entender y, y reconocer las emociones de otra persona. Eh, eh, es difícil a veces tratar de entender a otra persona y ponerse en, en el lugar de ellos cuando están pasando un problema, cuando están tristes, cuando están bravos cualquier emoción que tenga. Pero la primera cosa, lo más importante de, de tener empatía es para es escuchar a la persona y lo que están diciendo. Porque a veces cuando uno está teniendo una conversación con otra persona, no los escucha. Está hablando pensando lo que uno va a decir. La segunda cosa es, es eh, validar sus emociones. O si están bravos, si están tristes, si, están, si tienen miedo. A, dile a ellos que tú sabes que ellos están, se sienten así. O pregúntale si se sienten así. Y después también es darle ellos ayuda, either suya, ofrecerle otros lugares que pueden buscar ayuda. So, implementar esas estrategias son maneras de que uno puede implementar empatía en todos los días. Gracias. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you for Mental Health Thursday. We know how, how important it is. We've seen uh, what's happening throughout our nation uh, with, with, uh, with the protests, with things happening throughout our country uh, due to the murder of George Floyd. I mean, George Floyd was murdered by a police officer in Minneapolis. And there were other three other police officers uh, that were complicit to his murder. Obviously, and more importantly, we need justice for, for him, for his memory, for George Floyd's memory, but for his family. Uh, but specifically what Rosie was talking about, right, is empathy, right? Having that ability, you gotta walk in other people's shoes. You gotta see through other people's eyes. Too many times, you know, just think about it. Sit back, you know, sit down for a second, just listen. A lot of times we're just kind of talking to our friends and we have the same views but we have the same upbringing but a lot of times when you talk to other folks you see through other people's eyes or walk in other people's shoes your perspective uh, changes uh, sometimes maybe it doesn't but at least uh, understanding is right. what it's all about um, is, is really that so uh, showing them you care like listen yeah you, you want to say that this that's a 
Oh, she, okay, <laughs> showing folks that you care by listening. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Rosie. Yeah. Mr. Manager, anything else you want to chime in with? I know we're heading towards that direction. When do you think we'll have 100% of our businesses back up and running? Yeah, I think that they're doing it. The, the county and the state are being very methodical with all of our reopenings, right? So I think that now they've reached a point where uh, they're going to allow the current state to exist for a few weeks before they move on uh, to new reopenings. They want to get to 100%. They want to get to a completely uh, normal environment. They're, what they're trying to guard against is allowing it to be too fast, too quick, and then we have that second spike that everybody uh, talks about, is, which is the potential. That's what everybody's trying to avoid. So some of the measures that we've been taking with regard to social distancing, our facial coverings, those are going to be in place for quite a bit of time. Uh, so we're going to continue to see in restaurants the uh, plexiglass barriers. All of that is going to be part of our new normal for quite a while. But hopefully we'll be able to get to the point where everybody, us as consumers, right, we get to that comfort level with the cleanliness in uh, stores and restaurants and uh, establishments that we all now feel comfortable and that we feel that we're going to be safe when we go into these stores. So I think that's what they're going to wait. They're going to wait for a few weeks to see and make sure that we don't have that, uh, that, that spike. Hopefully we'll be able to avoid it as long as everybody uh, works together. Look, one of the good things for businesses uh, happening right now is what, what's happening with the PPP, the, the Payroll Protection Program up in Washington. I know Marco, our senator uh, here in Florida, uh, Marco Rubio, was one of the champions. It was a bipartisan bill, but now it looks like they're extending it. Now, originally, they were talking about maybe eight, eight weeks to utilize those dollars, but understanding that consumer uh, habits, right, the, the, the consumer demand hasn't reached to where it needs to be, so you're seeing that being extended, I believe, up to 20 weeks. Uh, which is so so important because we know it's going to take time for for consumers to feel comfortable going into a lot of places uh, in the the way that they were going into right before COVID nineteen. So I think that is a great great that's great great news for all the businesses in our community uh, that were that were eligible and got the PPP. So those are the types of things that are happening. I think for the first time in a long time, we're really seeing uh, the federal government as a whole work together. This that was a perfect example. It doesn't get enough. Uh, kudos, but we need to talk about that. That was a bipartisan push that has really helped uh, our economy. If it wasn't for the PPP, you would see uh, many, many, many more businesses uh, closing their doors. But I, I really have to, you know, a lot of times we blame Washington for things, but we also have to, you know, look at Washington uh, for the first time in a long time and tell them, hey, they did a great job with the PPP. That is one program that I see Democrats, Republicans, Independents, everybody get behind because it was a common sense approach and it's one of the first times the bailout wasn't just to to the big businesses but it was specifically stimulus dollars to small business owners mom and pops who don't have what's called national credit behind them who can't withstand you know having their doors closed two three four months so i just wanted to make that that point today because i think it's really really important while there's a lot of things happening around our country there's a lot of good things uh, that need to be highlighted, and that's one of the ones that Washington got right, uh, right for, 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 and everybody came together, which is so, so powerful. We need more of that uh, and in it Washington. Was executed too, it was ex I mean, with one, but it was executed. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and Rosie brings up a great point: how fast they got it done. All the community banks. I think now you're seeing, and I know I'm, uh, we're 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 going a little bit deeper into the discussion, but there's a lot of community banks here in, in Miami Lakes. You have. Uh, one of the one of the larger ones, Bank United. You have Banco Popular that are, that are based here. You have some of the other small Ameren Bank, U.S. Century. You have all these different banks, and now you're seeing the value of community banks and how they react mm -hmm. to these types of situations. So yeah, it's it's interesting. But there, while there it is very stressful, there is the time that we're living in. There's a lot of good that's happening. And that's one of the ones that happened in Washington that we really have to uh, give kudos to to the Congress and, and uh, for getting it done. So, anything else you wanted to chime in on, or you think we're... No, I think that's it. That's, uh, that's where we're at uh, with the COVID. So, no questions, Brandon. We're good to go. Miami Lakers will give you about another 30 seconds to chime in. I'm going to ask one more question of Rosie. So, Rosie, I know you specialize uh, working with kids, right? I know right. this time has been very stressful for kids. Specifically, imagine you 
You're so you're so excited. You go to school every day. You're interacting with kids every day, and now you've gotten to to the other extreme, right? Where mm -hmm. you don't get to interact with kids. You can't go just to the park and have these types of activities. So I think you're, you you see a lot of anxiety. You know, uh, I saw I read an article today how we need to talk about more on the mental health side for kids. What, what do you recommend to those parents or those young kids uh, that might be going through a tough time? You know, emotionally uh, due to the COVID nineteen pandemic. I recommend obviously empathy because it's the only way that you can connect with your child, in my opinion, my professional opinion. Um, I also recommend educating yourself on the different reasons as to why they might be acting in that way. I know I talked about it before. They don't display their emotions the same way adults do. So it's really important, I mean, Google it. Google it from a reputable source or call a professional. There's many professionals that have free consultations, but try to find out what what the symptoms that your child is displaying are and and try to provide them the help they need. And if it's something that falls out of your expertise, go ahead and contact a professional so they can help you a little bit further. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you thank for you. that. Miami Lakers, thank you for chiming in to our Mental Health Thursday. Thank you to Councilman Coyazo for working with mental health professionals here in our community to make sure that that discussion happens every single week. And uh, reach out to us. We got your back. I mean, you're talking about from our staff to our council to the volunteers at Rosie. We are all here for you. We want to make sure that every single Miami Laker uh, is taken care of. Uh, not only if if you're all having a difficult time financially and you need uh, some extra food, we have uh, our volunteers that are working on that uh, continuously over there at the Methodist Church. If you need to just to talk to somebody, we have uh, community volunteers and, and professional volunteers like Rosie that are out here. To work with you guys so just know we got your back a hundred percent we're getting through the COVID-19 pandemic let's continue working together and together uh, we're, we make a better community I mean, that's what it's all about we got to stay united Miami Lakers take care call us 305-364-6100 and we'll see you next week